So this is the last part of our three-part discussion about the Pathfinder concept. If you haven't listened to the first two, we want to encourage you to hit the pause button on this and go back and listen to those other two episodes first. We're basically picking up right where part two ended, with me telling a story about a time where I was acting as a self-appointed Pathfinder as a station captain years ago. So here it is, the Pathfinder, part three. When I was a captain, and this is back in 2006, uh, after Black uh, Sunday happened in New York, uh, they developed the Petzl XO, you know, bailout system. Yes. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was doing a lot of reading on it, and there were bailout kits, and, and then there was only one system, and the, the XO was the system. And I did all this research, and I bought kits, and I got, at the time, the nearest company that would, uh, that would sell you a Petzl XO was in Nashville, I think. It was in Tennessee. And I got them to send me one, and I said, look, can you just send it to me? I, I want to look at it and test it. And they were nice, and they sent it. And um, we did tests on it. I bailed out five something times per kit, per system, out of a window, you know, on a belay. We did. I, I quantified all of this stuff, prepared a report, and no one had, no one told me to do any of it, any of this. I was doing it all on my own. Prepared this report, and I gave it to my battalion chief. Battalion chief says, "I want you, to, I want you to present." Right. I mean, that's what I was doing, and I want, I want you to present. And I didn't know who I was presenting to, and I come to a meeting to present. And the fire chief ends up in the room with a bunch of deputies and other people. I do my 10 minutes on the problem, why I did the testing. Here's what I think is the the best solution to this problem. And the fire chief says, let's do it. And I had, I mean, I was floored. It was going to cost 300 something thousand dollars at the time to outfit everybody. I was floored. Did not expect that at all. You know, but he says, no, let's do it. What were you expecting? I don't know. I, I I went into it. I, I mean, I was I was talking. I was a station captain who was saying we need to spend three hundred thousand dollars on something that most people in the department don't think is a problem. In knowing you, I doubt that that you did not have some expectation. I don't remember. He's backing you into a corner. So anyway, I wrote, um, woke up on the wrong side of a confrontation this morning. <laughs> anyway, so that's been clear. Uh, the fire chief says let's do it, and I mean, like I said, I was floored. What I didn't count on was I had had the loops sewn into my turnout gear. Um, we had just ordered brand new turnout gear for just the entire the department. Just gotten it. To add the loops to a new set of turnout gear, and this is all at the time, so don't quote me on the numbers, but at the time they said it was $10 extra per turnout pants to have the loops. If you had the loops sewn on after the fact, it was like eighty or ninety dollars. Not to mention that it's outside the contract. Now. Outside the contract, yeah. So this was a it, we we didn't end up going with the system because we could not afford the. He was willing to spend the three hundred thousand dollars on on the system and the training, but the cost it was like five hundred thousand dollars. It was going to cost us to alter all the the turnout gear or something. I mean, it was crazy, and our, that's not true. It went fine, but it it made it too expensive and it passed the threshold where he was willing to buy it and we didn't end up doing it. So there was this whole piece of me being this pathfinder and identifying this problem and this solution that I never anticipated. I didn't have all the information. So let me ask you a question then. Did that lead to you doing things differently? I tried to anticipate things better because it, in, 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 in hindsight, it was obvious you have to have these loops on your turnout gear. That needs to be part of the cost of it. But but here's the here's the and this is why I bring all this up. So I was doing the Pathfinder thing. Most firefighters in our organization would have been pissed if I'd said if if they knew one firefighter went out, identified this thing, and now I've got this seven, eight pound bag of rope and hardware on my hip that I don't think I need. So I'm being a pathfinder, identifying the solution for the organization on my own that the leader says, yep, let's do it. But the rest of the organization says this is completely, and they didn't, they didn't, but they could have. Yeah, there definitely would have been some percentage of the organization sure. that would have done that. And would have said, Probably this, about 50% is, this is insane. So now what does that do to the pathfinder? Nothing. Nothing? No. 
That's, you don't have to please all the people all the time. It's not about. I mean, I, I think I think, it is. I think the vast majority of people would have been upset that I had done this. So, if you care about that, why'd you do it? I thought I was right. I still have a system on my on my turnout gear. All right, then, then that's all you were doing. All right, we'll cut that part out. Yeah. <laughs> It seemed like it was going no, so well. No, you know what it made was, me think I, of? No, leave, leave it because it makes me look, the, make you look bad. What if, the leadership, <laughs> what if the leadership was ahead of you and in some ways was manipulating you and thought That's the whole possible. time, you know what, I can tell him, yeah, but I have no intentions on doing this because I know the turnout gear just... That's not, not good leadership, no. in my opinion. Well, well, not turns good leadership. Out, We've never heard of that. Yeah, it's, I mean... But like I said, I, I didn't expect the leadership to to do this at all because of he had a history. He had a I I had a perception of the way that he was, and he's not going to okay this. But he did. Plus, you didn't know that he was even going to be there for the presentation. No, you I thought no you were idea. giving it to uh, some battalion chiefs, battalion chiefs, or something. maybe executive staff. Yeah, you weren't expecting. No, so, no if idea. you want to see what it looks like on the other side of that, if you would have made it come through, because. Went through a similar thing, vetted out the systems, right. very familiar with all the systems that were available, Black Sunday. Uh, now, was this done on somebody's, on their own, or was this the department pursuing? It started as a, on on their own. Okay. Which got buy-in from the department, which put together a team to so, review it for the department. So, which it sounds like the Pathfinder went out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Came, came back, back to came the back. group hey, we and need said, to go hey, this way. here's where I'm going. Are you okay with this? And and they said, you know what? You're doing good. Keep going. It was not, hey, you're doing good. Keep going. It's going, let me add some people to help you track down this path so you're not doing it by yourself. Okay. So now they put, all still going down semi the same direction, right? Because you have options at that time. There was limited, but you had some options. What system are we going to do? How much is it going to cost? Right. Who are we going to get it from? So the end result of it being that the leadership was favorable to it, much like you, and the difference was that there was enough information gathered to go, here's the system that we want to recommend. Here's the cost of that system. Here's the training required for us to implement this system. And here is the cost that it's going to be to retrofit our gear and X, you know. So what ended up happening was that a lot of that information was gathered. And then there was two components. And I'm, I'm looking back at it now with a different lens going, wow, it, it was actually done in a way where it didn't leave much space for failure. So now you have, hey, somebody comes back, they took it on their own. We're going to give you a team, go back, get all the research, give us the information, covered all the bases and then go, and then saying, all right, there's two components to this that we need to tackle. This is a strategic part. There's a financial component. We need to have all those facts and we need to know how to present it. We knew who the audience was. That was a huge difference. We knew who the audience was. Then there was an emotional component, right? Black Sunday, big deal. Very big deal. We're doing this. That has not happened here. If it ever does, we want to be prepared for it because we learned from it somewhere else. So now you have not only that objective uh, information and the money and, and all that, you have the emotional component that was brought to the table too, which ends up being successful. Successful meaning it was purchased, it was introduced, it was trained upon. Then to Bill's point. Not the whole entire organization is bought in to carry some extra weight on the gear and where they're carrying it and how right. they're carrying it. So you fast forward and guess what the new trendsetters or the new pathfinders are looking at? Do we have to have it? Right. Mm-hmm. It, should we not have an option? So as much work as you did, Bill, to put that together and this just, for me, it, it just kind of triggered a thought to go, what happens? Because this is what we forget. When the new trendsetter is actually trending against what you worked very hard well, to get us to. So, yeah. Yeah. This is what I was talking about the last time when I was talking about all of us and you. There is going to be, we're in the, in the I'm, I hate to say twilight of our careers because that's not exactly what I mean. But the point being is we're getting towards the end of our career. Yeah. And they, although we used to be those pace setters in a lot of way and pathfinders or whatever, and we still are in, in, in different facets now there are people coming behind us that are 
could very well be turning around things that we put yeah. in place. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you got to remove. You got to yeah, have the right. professional maturity, maturity to look at the fact that <laughs> yes. what was done twenty years ago could be reversed by that trendsetter, that pathfinder today, and you cannot go. I worked so diligently for this, right. and now you're trying to trash my idea. It should be. All right, is it time for, right. for us to reevaluate this? That's where I was going originally. That the although I, we I got to be careful with the professional maturity piece because it's not negative. It's not negative. It's not negative. We we are at where we're at in our leader in our organizations now and our time frame. We have to also have some professional maturity to stop that. Yeah, it what, it applies to, to for me squashing and, that enthusiasm and emotionally attached to. Well, damn, I worked so hard on that. So <laughs> that's the Colin Powell. Yeah. Don't don't put your ego so close to your position that when your position falls, your ego goes with it. Right. So you got to you have to that professional maturity. And I'm glad you re, you brought that back up should not be looked as a negative thing. No, we all should be maturing. Some of us don't professionally and stop at a certain point. But the fact is, I can go back to. 15 years ago when this took place, know how bought in I was, how enthusiastic I was, how successful I felt the whole thing was. And when someone 15 years later decides to come in and introduce something differently, my professional professional maturity allows me to understand where they were or where I was, where they currently are and go, just because this opposes what I worked at does not mean that what they're bringing to the table is as valid today as my point was 15 years ago. So to me, that takes, and it takes humility too. It's not, I mean, it takes humility to go, okay, it was a great idea 15 years ago. It doesn't mean it's a great idea today. And he's, this person probably doesn't even know that I worked on it. But a lot of times it turns into an emotional, no, do you know how hard I worked to get this here? Yeah, no, you're, you're right. Got us back to that. There's a group of people that you've worked with now for three or four years. They've only known you as Chief Troche. They don't Correct. know. They don't have a, have a clue who yep. tr- Firefighter Troche was yep. crawling down halls. What does he know about bailout of, systems yeah. and and that old, hoses that and old fart up there in the yeah. in the tower? No clue whatsoever. They don't know what we do. And guess what? They may mention a couple of things where they are correct. He doesn't know anything about this. You're absolutely right because what I did know is now antiquated, not applicable today. And some of us will go. Everything is applicable. Listen, things change. Technology changes. You used to, so there comes a time where you have to recognize that you are not the knowledge base on this anymore. Someone, they have more information than you do because it's super hard to stretch this line down this hallway. I did it for 20 years. I don't see what the problem is. You use different hose with different nozzle, with different pressures. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so... A little bit of humility to listen and see and not take it as in it's not a negative thing. No. But that's that's what I get from what Hatch was saying before, which is you are putting those pathfinders in a position because you know they know more. Mm-hmm. You trust them. You should you be. Know. Hatch, you're, if stairs were a drinking game, I'd be drunk right now. Mm. <laughs> like is that, that yours or did you steal that from somebody? Uh, just said it. You yeah. just made it up. Good yeah. job, Bill. That was pretty good. He's very creative. Sounds like a T-shirt. He's a left brain guy. <laughs> yeah, let's get that on a T-shirt. <laughs> Actually, he's a left brain and right brain guy. It's, a, it's one of the rarities. And so, Joe. you want to articulate your stare, Hatch? Uh, no, stare. No, no. Oh, how do you articulate a stare? That's weird. Uh, mm. So, I don't. I don't really understand what you're. What you're. Well, where were you? Uh, I don't know, it may be out of context now, but I think we could probably work through this. Where were you going with your first follower piece earlier? The, the leadership oh, 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 yeah, the leadership from the dancing but guy. I'm sure it's that pace so, setter, so, the pathfinder. No, he's the pathfinder. Yeah. He's the pathfinder. The dancing guy's the pathfinder. And then he gets somebody else to join him. Before you know it's a whole movement. He's not doing it to take it to the administration. He just doing he's, it. he's not saying, hey, look at me at the stage. Everybody needs to dance this way. He's doing it, and he would just end up with followers good. because it feels good. It's because, And that's what I was going to say. What would you have done if the chief said no? 
would you have still bought your own bailout system and still used it and yeah. still used the research? Right, because you are that pathfinder. You were not doing it to change the organization. You were doing it because this no, was no, right I, and this worked for I, me. I did believe that it was the right thing for the organization. Right, and you presented it to them that way. But yeah. the whole, I would hope that the whole crust of the thing was, was this is you. And you were creating yeah, a path for others to follow, but I if they don't, it's okay too. I I'm still going to do it. I wasn't devastated when it didn't go down. Right. I mean, I... I I attempted, but the 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 piece is is that you you were wired that way. There are right. some people though oh, that yeah. are pathfinders. Yeah. They get absolutely bent out of shape. And if you don't adopt gonna, it one hundred percent, which I'm so glad you said that because I think again I want to like say this. I'm going to say this professional <laughs> maturity piece. This I think this is important. Stop I, saying professional. I, I know. Maturity. I need to stop it. But it's We've it is what one. it is. You're right. He's going to look it that up out in a second. Though. The point being that. If, if an individual, pace setter, pathfinder, whoever, recruit, leader, chief, whatever. Well, no, no. Take the chief out of that. That's not, not, not a good one. If you bring an idea to, to an organization or to your group, to your company, to whatever, 100%, you, and you think it's going to come out the other end at 100%, yeah. that's a trap. Because what you hope is, is that you bring an idea to the group or to the organization and that the organization starts to buy in to your idea. But what happens when they start buying in is they start taking pieces away of your original 100% because they got to put a little bit of theirs in there for the for the buy-in to actually happen. And then it so, turns into Frankenstein. And then it turns into Frankenstein. But the point of it is, is I feel like that if an idea you brought forth comes out 70% of you, and you had to give away 30% for other people to put their thoughts and ideas into, that is a win. Totally. And But there are people that will not, they don't see it as a win. No, they they're not collaborative. As, they All right, so what do, you gonna, their, what do you say to those people, Shane? What do you, I would say it just exactly the way I just said yeah. it now. It's why I am saying it now, because I hope there are people listening to our podcast that are those pathfinders and pace setters, and that... And this eases some of their frustration. That's the whole point of this, is so that people can start to see a different perspective so that the pathfinders see a different perspective and go, you know what, I can, maybe I see why people are getting frustrated now. I hope that leadership are listening to our podcast and go, yeah, you're right, I need to be a little more careful and make sure I don't stamp out right. some enthusiasm. That is the whole point of us talking about what we're doing. That's exactly how I would tell an individual that's a pathfinder that comes to me and that is frustrated that I didn't adopt their idea at 100%. I would explain to them why 30% had to come in of everybody else to create the quote-unquote buy-in. And on the other side of that, I would say exactly what you said to the leadership that are making the decision as to whether go with it or not. Don't crush that enthusiasm. You want these people so bought into Fired the organization up. that they're just cruising. And yeah, you need to put some guardrails in there and you need to kind of harness some of that in. Well, you're but, right. You know, actually, you just bring up a good point. And we had an individual that I think that's what they were trying to do is push back on me. When leadership comes up with an idea of 100%, this is how we should do it. We should actually start giving away right. and maybe let 70% of that idea go and let the boots on the ground buy in right. to some of the percentage, right? You, I, can you articulate your eyebrows there, Hatch? <laughs> articulate? I, I, just, I, didn't I just looked it. at him because that's what I was doing to him yesterday. I mean, it, was, it was the field pushing back on him yesterday. Yeah. It was oh, Hatcher okay. pushing. It, it was it. Hatcher pushing back on. Anyway, you know, still being conversation. We have to remember that also as we're pushing ideas, yeah. concepts, policies, whatever the case. So it's funny you say policies. So I, I've worked in policy revision. Was that a good segue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just I just jumped in there. Sorry, uh, some policy revision, and I would have you know senior members in the room, and I'd have junior members in the room, and I'd often see the senior members would overshadow the junior members. I've been here longer. I have a lot more information about this, and I started seeing fewer and fewer of the junior members showing up. Now those are the ones who are going to deal with this policy for the next twenty five years, and so I would engage them, and I would constantly like cut the the senior people off. I got it. You've said your piece. Stop. I need to hear from him. He's going to be here for 25 years. What does he think? Blah, 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 blah. And I think they get into this whole thing. It's uh, They cast a big shadow. Mm -hmm. You know, senior people cast a big shadow. And they don't think. They're, they're just in their sharing and being collaborative. But you also have to cultivate at the same time. You have to be that leader to cultivate those 
next generation of, of pathfinders or pace setters or what do you want to call and bring them into the fold of like, I, I need to hear what you think. Did, did right. you like what I said? And not be so emotionally tied to this was your idea. No, there's a, a great quote uh, that Shane and I talked about just this week uh, that said, a, a man may do an immense deal of good if he doesn't care who gets, gets the credit. credit. Yeah. And man, that's what a good one. It's incredibly hard to live up to that. That is personally that for me personally, and I, I confess this to Bill, it is the thing that I have to run through my head pretty regular. Yeah. Otherwise I find myself in a trough because of my character flaws. And I, I don't wanna I don't wanna label those individuals that that do think that that idea has to be adopted one hundred percent their way, but there's a piece of me that wants to say are you not willing to let any of this go because you want all the credit for it? Is that yeah? Is, is that, that really the, is what that we're the right doing motivation? here? Or are you really just interested in getting this change in place? And what will you do to do it? Right, right. Would you take your name off, off. of it completely? completely. Yes, that's been a, there, done that. Yes, sure. That's a tough one, and that's that's ridiculously hard for people to to do sometimes. Egos so, are well, get because put away. they have put so is much of themselves into it. Considered. On whether it's a good idea or a bad idea? I, th- I think it should at least be considered. I'm not saying that it shuts it down completely, but I think sometimes we probably should consider motive. So interesting, interesting, because in order for me to object- objectify something with... That's bad, right? <laughs> in order for me to be Keep objective... I'll look it up in a minute. <laughs> in order for me to be objective, I have to remove that component because then i'm going to start looking at the individual and not the product i'll use well you could use almost any analogy but but what i do is i will say all right i may have a person who doesn't set well with me bring a great idea for me to stay very neutral objective about that Motive to me is not something that right. because you could be self motivated and push. trip over an amazing idea. I got to push. I got to push on you. Push back on because this. on a previous episode we were talking and I thought you said that um, we should not be results oriented. Intent was all that mattered. But in- no, 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 no. So, so well, intent is motive, and in one instance, you were saying if they had the right intent to ventilate on our last episode, I guess Mm -hmm. that ventilation was the right thing to do because you had the right intention. Even if it didn't turn out that way, we should still be saying it was the right thing to do. But in this instance, you're saying that motive shouldn't be factored. It should only be results. I want to help you out. And I I have to to me, those are two completely different subjects that I'm, that I I see where you're coming from, where you're trying, where you're pulling motive out because it does possibly put an emotional piece to an idea Correct. So it's for, not it, about the idea; it's about who's bringing it. it to let, you. let me put this. But is that motive, or is well, that just the? Well, person? let me put this I this think, way, Bill. You bring the bailout system to the table, mm-hmm. and you have all the intentions in the world that this is the best thing for the department and everything else. Somebody else says, "We're in the middle of promotions. Bill is trying to show his best thing forward. This is nothing but a benefit to him. The idea Head doesn't Bob change." And all. Right. The idea doesn't change. Where I, I don't disagree with that. Where I discussed it differently on the other one as far as outcomes was that on an operational level, the things that we do on an operational level, that we will obviously judge things based on an outcome where you can have the same occurrence in three different fires with three different outcomes. And then based on the outcome, we're going to take action on it. And usually that's a negative action. Hey, I went in and did this and the outcome wasn't favorable. I have disciplinary action. Hey, I went and did this. The outcome was favorable. I'm getting a purple heart, a a medal of sort. So to me, those are two completely different conversations as far as how I'm looking at it. In this particular case, I'm looking at the individual and going, I'm trying not to pay attention to Bill's motive because it may convolute my ability to actually focus on what you're bringing to the table. Oh, I, I That's agree. very mature. I agree that you, that you ought you. to That's divorce yourself. Mature. That you ought to divorce yourself of those things. If it's a good idea, it doesn't matter who brought it to you. Yeah. And that's for me as a defense mechanism, because if I put a person to it, I may actually not give it the diligence it deserves. So I try to immediately go, 
what's the idea? The person doesn't exist. It's blurred out. I don't want but to, I don't want to cross that, that in the other realm. I do the same thing with, if the outcome was good, I don't, I mean, how does, it, how does it matter what your intent was <laughs> is a mistake that turns out great. Not, not valid because it was a mistake. So, Again, on this conversation, I would say this. Somebody comes to the table. One of you come to the table with an idea. I want to be super cautious. And it's not trust. This goes uh, back to, to that. It's not trust. I don't want to put myself out there going, well, it's so-and-so. So absolutely, this has got to be right. And then it bites me in the butt. And then somebody who I maybe not look that favorable to brings something to the table. And I'm already finding every opposition to it. It's actually a great idea. So how do I look at what product are you selling? That's what I'm paying attention to. What your motive is right now is not as important at what is it that you're bringing to the table. A bailout system, a new training venture, new turnout gear, new uniforms. If I put a person to it, it's going to total. A business person has the ability to figure out, am I buying the person or am I buying the product? Sometimes I, the person is what you're I buying. I don't agree. I agree. I agree ninety five percent with what you're saying. That's but to where totally I'm divorce it's... myself from the person, if this person is somebody who has brought us thirty things, and every time it has been a shit show, they might bring me the cure for cancer, and I'm still gonna go. You know what? This might turn out to be a shit show because of who's involved. I can't. I. I. I you, in, yeah, you can't undo. In it. theory. It's a great thing to say, I'm going to divorce myself from it. But I, I don't think that it's actually the right thing to do to completely divorce yourself of who's bringing it. And I don't you know that you can completely it, do it. You're framing it, it in, a, in a negative. It can go the other way. No, positive somebody, or negative. Somebody, I did both. Somebody who's brought you 30 great ideas brings you a shit idea and you go, oh, this might be good because of who brought it to me. That's, I, that might happen too. And I, I might I might err on their side because they have. They have not led me wrong before. So let me say that I don't have the emotional aptitude to totally divorce myself from that human being. Okay. What I am saying is I make every attempt a goal. to look at what the goal, what the product is, yeah. unless the person is what I'm buying. For instance, hey, we need to put this training program together. We're going to do this, that, and the other. All right. You want to do this. You may not be the best suitor for this particular thing. And now I have to bring the individual into it. But what I am saying is it's almost humanly impossible. You're correct. That 5% to go. I can totally divorce myself from the emotional part. I do everything in my effort. I guess it would be the, the simplest way of putting it. Everybody deserves your attention and a win. I'm not looking for the loss into it. I don't know that they deserve a win. I was about to win. put some Yellowstone in there. Well, I, I don't know yeah. that they deserve Nobody a win. deserves any. You don't deserve anything. <laughs> yeah, well, I, wait, I, I don't want to get the semantics. I, what no, I'm no, saying is I, this. I, if you come to the table, just because this goes part. back to the Pathfinder, the dis disenfranchised because he keeps coming to the table and getting knocked down. What I'm saying is I want you to be successful because I don't like you. You're not going to walk into the room and be guaranteed failure for you which is what I think some people feel when they walk into a room because that emotional connection is present. Oh, great. Who's going to be my audience? Trosh. He hates my guts. This is going hey, nowhere. But what what that happens? Should, you try to remove that to go, I tell you what, him and I may not be eye to eye on stuff, but he is objective and the opportunity is on the table for me to be successful. What happens when that pathfinder who has brought 10 things to the department before and we don't do any of them because for whatever reason, you know, they keep trying to take us to the right of where we're trying to go. I mean, just 90 degrees from where, where the organization wants to go, but they keep insisting we need to go this way. Yeah, they're trying we to get an airplane to fly. Exactly. And we haven't done it 10 times. And then they come in and they say, um, here's this great idea. And we have divorced ourselves. And we say, you know what? It is a good idea. This time this person struck gold and we're going we're gonna to take that idea. Mm -hmm. And then that person goes out and trashes everything about the idea and the organization. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a little surprised that there's so much pushback on that. I, the, here's where my mind keeps reverting to. For some reason, I keep going to Shark Tank. A bunch of business people oh, that sit good, there. It's a good example. And then you come and you present. doesn't matter if you've been there before or not. You come present something. What are they looking at? 
Am I buying the person or am I buying the product? Can I make money from this? Is this going to be good for my company? One per- person says, no. And the other person like, I'll absolutely buy into that. That fits within my model. So there's a, there's a, the a distinction. Business, there's definitely a distinction. And the business world kind of can objectify that stuff. To, they're used to it to go, but I love you, but I'm not about to lose money and invest the in the relationship that. between that person who walks in and pitches the idea and those sharks lasts for 10 minutes. What we're talking about are pathfinders who are part of an organization who have a relationship. They, they're not walking away. They're not dismissed from the room and sure. we say, we're not going to take your idea and they leave and we never see them again. These are people that are within our organization that know us. We know them. Mm-hmm. It's not, and they have it's, a preconceived but it's, notion of what you okay. feel about them. That's why I'm saying I try to remove that. That's all. I try to remove that. Hatch has his hand up. The floor recognizes Hatch. Oh, good. I appreciate that. All those in favor of hearing Hatch? <laughs> Any hands? Hands? No. <laughs> Do the uh, sharks ever get it wrong? Sure. Right. Do Does them saying not investing in them make the people automatically stop? No. No, it doesn't. It's just a pathway. It's just a, another roadblock, another another path in it. If your motives are pure for why you're being the pace setter or the pathfinder or whatever it is, you're going to do it anyway. Just like you were going to, you're going to wear the bailout system regardless of the whole department bought it or not. You were going to right. do it, right? So either people are going to get on board and be the the dancing man, and you're going to get a whole following, or you're not. But the whole thing is, don't do it looking to change the organization. Do it because it's what you want to do. Because it's what you think is the right thing to do. If you're doing it to change everybody else, you're always going to get disappointed. Nobody's going to be 100% change. Yeah. And I don't disagree with that. Maybe my point is lost. But you're going to try. But I'm going to try to state it one last time. (laughs) Because I have to. You got this. I love it. Come on. Hit it. I, the motive, if you are not cautious, can sway a good decision and a bad decision. Your motive could be wrong and you could be hitting gold when a person comes to me with an idea a direction i'm going to be curious i am not going to be judgmental <laughs> i was literally just looking at my shirt. Man, shane pointed it out fantastic so now i want somebody to challenge ted lasso on this one because it's not true can't go but there no, can't, yeah, can't go there <laughs> So, you know, I think when we have this discussions, it's great. Uh, and what I appreciate is sometimes it gets difficult for you to get your point across and maybe coming off wrong. And all of us will treat things differently, just like the sharks or anybody else. And you may get it wrong. I, I guess what it comes down to me is I've gotten it wrong more often by looking at the motive and the individual and injecting my perception of that person versus just looking at the idea itself. versus just looking at the idea. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. I don't disagree with that, but I, I do say that to completely divorce yeah. myself is not, it's well, almost not impossible. Human. I agree with that. It's well, not, not, not that it's, I just don't think it's a good idea. I don't know I, that it's possible to be honest with you. We're human I, beings. I agree, but I, I think I'm not trying to, right. to get there because yeah. I think it, it has to be part of my calculus on, yeah, figuring I think out whether or not me. this is the path Can't to take. Do it. It's the risk. You know, how much of the risk you're going to put into right. it. And it's the risk calculation, risk versus reward. And we spend our careers building up that capital with other people that they are willing to take risks on us because we have been successful or our motives were right. correct in the good, past. Right. And, you know, mm. some of us have greatly undervalued the. Well, that's, yes. And that's a whole, that's a whole who thing you, on. Who are you talking on, about? On poor leadership. <laughs> No. I'm pretty sure I just it's won good, this entire I mean, argument a, with Ted good. Lasso quote. It's a good conversation. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, about being feeling undervalued, right? Well, and I think that's part, I that? think that's part of it. I think some of the pathfinders and the pace setters sure. feel undervalued at sure. some yeah. point. Yeah. But again, it goes back to some of their motives. What was their motive going into it? Was it to say my work is going to totally change the landscape here or if you're going to do it anyway, right? Why do you care? If you were going to do this anyway, if you were right. going to, I, I used to, I, I do something with my battalion, you know, where at, and whatever. And so I had a captain come to me and he said, uh, you know, you're the only one that does this, the only battalion chief that does this. I'm like, yeah, okay. And uh, so we kind of had a conversation. He was like, you know, this, this guy, he talks to other people in the department and other people don't do it. I'm like, I'm okay with that. 
And I asked him, I said, uh, you used to be a land surveyor, right? And he said, uh, yeah, yeah. And I said, when you were trying to find the property pins, did you create a path or did you follow? Was there already a path for you to follow? And he said, I created a path. I'm like, sometimes I do too. I was going to do it regardless if everybody else was doing it or not. If other people want to follow my example, that's fine. If they don't, I don't care. So that's the whole thing. Hmm. That was good. You got a hump on that one. <laughs> 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 Sweet. I, the only thing I we didn't um, you know, clean this up. The only thing we didn't really talk about, and that I think it's important to talk about, is that fool's errand piece. When yeah. when Ooh. the when when the organization is not being. 100% transparent about right. what they're doing. Right. And I think that that's something. No, that it's I, like giving you busy work kind of if thing. You, if you send and somebody up. I thought up, it was just busy work is yeah. what that ultimately is. If you send up somebody up a fork of the river to. Knowing good and well. Yeah, that you're not going to go that way. Yeah. That's that's just bad leadership. Right. That's. And, and again, it goes back to, you, you mentioned something about the, you know, the vision or something. And there really has to be a lot of communication. You know, that those lines of communication have to be open. You know, it, it's not good communication for the Pathfinder to get so far ahead that they're not communicating what's going right. on, and, and that broadens the gap that has to be overcome later on. And it's not great for the the uh, leader not to say what the vision is, what the ultimate goal is. You know, this is the direction you're going in. I think you said something along the lines of like, you know, you know, they did ten things, and it's so vastly different from what everything else we were going to do. Well, then there's a communication breakdown right. between that, right. You're right. that, that pathfinder. You're right. If you're bringing ten things to the table, and that's not even close to what the direction we're going, right, we've missed something. Right, we, we're missing this connection. We need to get reconnected again. So I think that's all, and that's on both sides. Yeah, no, no, they they might be just completely batshit crazy. Right, right, right. Or they may truly just misunderstand or what the not agree is. with the well, the they, the. the the leader's vision. But at that point, you kind of have to say, exactly. Oh, do I want to be part of this the organization? organization? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Behind exactly. The vision, right. yeah. Have you yeah. ever been for any of you? Have you ever been in a room, a meeting or a situation? Yes. Yes. Where you presented something <laughs> to an idea, an opinion, a view, a direction, whatever it is. We can't and it just kind of, it, huh? no, I'm, I'm very focused right now. It kind of lays flat. Somebody says pretty oh, yeah. much exactly what you said, and they're like, "That's a great idea, Shane." And in your mind, you're going, "I just said the same literally thing." We just said the same thing. Yeah, that's why I try to remove the emotion from it. Well, that goes back to what he said. If you don't care about the credit, right? Then, you don't care. Yeah. Great, then you can get can it, accomplish great things. My motive in in the eyes of the room may have been maybe I talk too much all the time, whatever the case may be. So, I, I and to your point, Hat, I don't think most of us. I think. All of us agree that for an organization just to dismiss somebody from the top is not good leadership, like you said. And I'm wondering, well, why does it happen? They got to know that it's not good. Hey, let me send you down this rabbit hole just so you can stay busy and get out of my way. Then why does it happen if almost, who would say, no, that's a good idea. There's a perfect reason for me to send you off on a endless mission just to get out of my hair and get out of my... Because some people think being busy is progress. And movement, and it's not necessarily because all it does is you're just moving the goalpost and just frustrating them. I'm curious if there's something we don't see, and if somebody's lead, uh, sitting out there that's in a leadership position that sees this not being a bad thing, that they'd reach out to us and let us know. It happens all the time, and I'm sitting here as you guys are talking about it going, somebody has to think that this is a good idea. What, to send people out on fool's errands? or Yeah, it happens know. all the time, so... It can't be by mistake every time. It may feel like it. You know, like if, if, if I send you out uh, and, I, and I did not communicate well and I gave you poor direction to go handle something for me, right? And then you come back and I'm like, God, he fucking missed the mark on that. But I don't want to kill him on it. You could feel like I just sent you on a fool's errand. And it wasn't. It has and to it be wasn't. explained. Hey, go recon. You just didn't do what I, want, what I thought I was asking you to do. But again, this is part of why I'm so direct, because I don't want there to be any miscommunication. So I'm very... No, and that's, that's a piece that we didn't maybe explain as well as we could have. But that Pathfinder position, there is a, like you were saying, Hatch, just a minute ago, you can get too far out. Right. And you can be too close. You can't be right on the edges of the main group. You've got to, there's a sweet spot that you've got to be right. far enough out that you're actually doing good work as a pathfinder, but not so far out that the group doesn't know what you're doing and you're, you know, you're cut off and all that other crap. And you've got to keep coming back and saying, Hey, 
has the destination, or are we still going to the same place? Right. Mm-hmm. Or has something changed? A lot of work involved. Is there something that happened to the group that I don't know about, you know? Yeah, did the mission change? Yeah. Have you ever set, it? Bill, been have, gone you, so long? have you ever set somebody out to do something only for their own benefit? Go do this just because you want them to have that growth opportunity. They don't know this. You're just going, no, work no. on this for me. I, if I say, if I, if I give them some, and I have done that, but I, I but tell them, very upfront about why. I tell them, I think you need to do this mm-hmm. for this experience because I think it will, you'll grow in this way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't, yeah. So maybe but very upfront about I, it. I yeah, rarely too. am accused of not telling people enough. Mm. Usually it's the opposite. So maybe Stop it's talking. happening because of a lack of communication. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around if we all know this is wrong, why is it happening? And maybe the explanation point. I think it's possible, but I don't I don't I don't see it happening around us. Uh, around me. It I depends who me. you go ask. We're in leadership positions, but if you go ask the troops how many times have you been sent out on this mission that doesn't even exist and you feel like you just spun well, your wheels? Okay. You're probably going to get a lot of people coming back. But yeah, I'm not doing say, that again. Let's, that was say a you're the, let's say you're the leader and I'm, I'm that pathfinder or waiting to become a pathfinder. I'm on the verge. I want to, I want to do it. And I come to you and I say, Hey, did you see that article on a, uh, they've invented some new nozzle that puts out fire twice as, twice as good as anything else and you say yeah i did see that it's kind of interesting it's called smooth pour <laughs> never mind good <laughs> it's kind of interesting and that's all we say about it mm-hmm. and i take that as he wants me to go look into this this is this is the new way that the department's going i no, i talked to him about it he said it was very interesting i'm gonna go that's miscommunication because we i didn't tell you i need you to look into this because the department might be going this direction but you kind of make that leap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. an interesting point you bring because it happened to me a month ago where I was literally in the middle of a conversation. I had nothing to do with just sitting there listening. Okay, okay. I walk off. And it isn't 20 minutes later I get a phone call. Well, they said that you, I'm like, <laughs> nope. I didn't I say wasn't that. even paying attention to most of the conversation. <laughs> I was just present. I have no idea what you you're nodded. talking about. You yeah, nodded. Somewhere I along the line, <laughs> they saw agreement in my face or something. <laughs> yep. Josh Watson. Yeah, which it may have been confusion. I don't he know. Smiles. See, I don't get that. I don't get that. They don't they're like, ooh, I don't want to talk to that guy. I want to tell you a little veteran move though. You talked about, you know, you ever said something in a room and somebody else said the exact same thing and it actually works. So I I do a d- different one. It's inception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will find the guy in the room that wants to ask all the questions and then I'll sit behind them and I'll be like, I don't know why we're doing this. We should remember. And they'll be like, they raise their hand. <laughs> so they get all the trash and I get to sit there and get the answer, but I get to laugh about it. Wait, wait, you said you sent them on a fool's errand? Oh dude, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was the best. I was having a blast doing it one day. So watch this, watch this. That's terrible. <laughs> Somebody's going to practice that. Oh, it's fun. I'm going to try man. that. Oh, I think yeah. people do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just find who that person is in the class or whatever that keeps raising their hand about everything. Like, why does that guy keep asking questions? Sit behind them. No, like, <laughs> all right, all right, I don't, right, I don't right, know why. Why is he getting up and moving? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he's good. Yeah. I'm done with this guy. Who's next? <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh. That's funny. I have to entertain myself in these classes. Yeah. <laughs> well. 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 Well, think there can, we go. Think you can work with that? Combustible is available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Amazon, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to Combustible to make sure you don't miss out on an episode. Follow us on Facebook so we know how many of you listeners there are out there. And you can check us out online at combustiblethepodcast.com. As always, we would like to thank the Golden Dogs and True North Records for letting us use their song Saints at the Gates for our theme music. You can find the Golden Dogs music on any streaming platform. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you later.